Hello everybody, today we are going to analyze the results of the Stack Overflow Survey 2019. If you live under a rock and you don't know what Stack Overflow is, Stack Overflow is a forum, a website where we uh, programmers go and ask questions, find questions and all that stuff related to all programming languages, not only JavaScript, not only Python, everywhere. All right, they asked 90,000 people, which is not like a lot, I mean, taking into account that they have millions and millions of visitors, but still, and yeah, so let's get into it, all right? Uh, I think the key results is that Python is the fastest growing major programming language, and it just passed Java this year, which is good, I guess because Python is used in data science and all that stuff, so that's why and is the second most loved language behind Rust. Looks like Rust is super loved by people. Maybe we should make a course in Rust? We don't know. All right, let's look into this. Geography, this is the map of what they asked people. Uh, of course, the United States is huge. India is massive. Europe is massive. Korea is tiny. But still, we love Korea. All right, developer roles. They asked people what roles do they have on their company or in what they do and 51% said they're full stack. Uh, I know if you, if, you, if you add this up, it doesn't give you 100%, and it's because people were able to choose many positions, right? So in this case, as you can see, 51% is full stack, 50 backend, and 32 only frontend. I guess th this is showing you that frontend is kind of disappearing and morphing into full stack. I guess, and backend is more like a specialized in the backend kind of thing. And then everything becomes tiny, 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 and it's big as students, DevOps, sys admins, developer, Q&A, or testing, data scientist, or machine learning specialist, I don't know, whatever. But yeah, look at that, full stack's taking over the world, and I think frontend is gonna in the next um, years. All right, next. Contributing to open source. This is a sad statistic because, um, I don't know, without open source, developers wouldn't have a job. Like, I, was, I wouldn't be making money if React wasn't here or Express wasn't here or Django wasn't here or like, I don't know, open source is like everything a developer needs. And 36% of developers never have contributed to open source or they do it less than once per year. I think that is nice. If, you, if we can change this statistic for the next year and maybe more people make open source since open source, open source benefits everybody. Also, this is very interesting, coding as a hobby. 80% of people said that they code as a hobby. Only 20% said they only code because on their work. But 80% code as a hobby and this shows you something good. What's good is that when you code as a hobby, you are better a developer in your day job. If you code as a hobby in your house, you will be better at your day work because you're coding, you love it, you have passion for it, all right? Now look at this. Years since learning to code, less than five years, the average person has five to nine years in learning to code. This shows you that it's not, this, this industry is not an old industry. It means that it's not like a 20, 25 to 29 years uh, people are mostly there. It means that you, you still have time. It's not like, oh, I know it's too late for me to learn to program. There's too many programmers. Look at us. Look at that. Five to nine years. Most of people are there. That's good. All right. Coding professionally, less than five years. Five to nine years. Look at that. Coding professionally, less than five years. That is 41%. That's a lot of people that just got into this less than five years ago. It's crazy. Uh, years of professional coding experience by developer type, boring. Writing that first line of code. Look at that. Younger than 10 years old. 11 to 11, 10 to 11 years old, 12 to 13, 14 and 15, 16 and 17. Most people do it 14 to 15. I did it 12 to 13. No, I think I was between 10 and whatever. But look at that. Very interesting. Let us know in the comments, when was your first time? that you wrote uh, your first line of code. When was your first time? Look at that, 1% one one was 30 years old or older. That's awesome, fucking good. Great, how many developers are students? Nope, 75%, full-time some of them, and part-time. Education, look at that, most developers have a bachelor's degree, 45%, but, and they have also an undergrad major, which is like a computer science, but when they teach themselves to program, they do it by themselves. So it's very interesting here because many developers have a bachelor's degree 
ain't a computer science undergraduate, but when they learn to program, they do it by themselves. Taught yourself a new language framework or tool without taking a formal course or taking an online course. That's huge. That's huge. That shows you that people are learning something, but then they have to re-educate themselves into the thing that they actually learned, which is 85% people learn by themselves. That's insane. Social media use. I mean, this is just whatever, but as you can see, we spend time in Reddit, YouTube, WhatsApp, Facebook. I don't use social media. And then some Chinese guys here. Awesome. All right. Next up, technology. This is what we came here for. Most popular technologies. JavaScript, it's the top. HTML, CSS, SQL, Python. And in the previous year, Python was under Java. Now Python has surpassed Java. And I predict that maybe it's going to keep going that way. Um, I think JavaScript is always going to be king because you have front end, back end, native, React, React Native like all that Node.js, Express, Koa, whatever. So yes, um, TypeScript is showing up here. TypeScript is fairly young and it's coming up. Super, super, super good. Then we have Ruby, pff, Go, Assembly, Swift, Kotlin, Scaba, Dart, WebAssembly, 1%. All right, now professional developers do the same thing. I don't know why they make this distinction, but whatever. And the next one, Web Frameworks. jQuery, I guess, is the most used one. And I think this is because there are many people that work on jQuery because of old projects that they still have to maintain. And I guess React is coming up. As you can see here, it just surpassed Angular in becoming popular. ASP.NET is there because Microsoft is cancer. And then Express, yep, everything is good. Django on top of Flask, and then we have PHP, and <laughs> Ruby again, and Drupal. Oh God, I hate Drupal. Awesome, next. Other frameworks, libraries, Node.js, super popular, .NET, again, Microsoft, Microsoft. Pandas is a um, data science thing for Python. Unity, making web video games and React Native. TensorFlow, interesting. Done, databases. I think MySQL keeps going at the top. MySQL, Postgres, Mongo, SQLite, Microsoft again. Microsoft, my, my, I think MySQL will be always, always queen. Most love hate it or dreaded like, oh God, I don't want to work with this and wanted programming language. So loved means developers have used this language and they want to use it again. 83% of people that tried Rust want to use it again. That is very, very high. So maybe we should get our shit together and we should go and look into making a Rust course because that is very, very high. People experience high satisfaction with Rust. Then of course, becomes types, uh, Python, TypeScript, amazing. Kotlin is to make I, uh, Android apps. WebAssembly, surprisingly, and then Swift. And then and other ones that we don't wanna talk about and JavaScript is going down. That's, that's, that's good. I, I hope um, TypeScript goes up more. But look at that, Rust is 83%. That's very far away from everybody else. As you can see, everybody else is kind of close to each other. Rust just fucking kills it. That's awesome. Dreaded. Dreaded is people worked on this and they want to stop using it, but they have to work on it. So they fucking hate it, but they wish they could quit. Visual Studio, uh, no, Visual Basic, I think. Yuck. Objective C. This shows you how good is that Apple released Swift to make iOS apps because people don't like Objective-C, Assembly, C, PHP, Erlang, Ruby, people don't like Ruby, R, Java, blah, blah, blah. And then of course here, JavaScript, 33%, they don't wanna keep using JavaScript, that's funny. All right, wanted, people would like to learn these languages or people know these languages and would like to apply them on a project. Python, 25%, of course, 17% JavaScript, Go, TypeScript, Kotlin, Rust, very interesting. Go showed up here. That's crazy. Assembly. Nice, 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 nice. Done. Most loved, dreaded, and wanted web, web frameworks. Loved. React. Hell yeah. Vue. They love it. Express, of course. Spring, if you're a Java person. ASP.NET. Loved. Django. Flask. They're very close to each other, huh? Laravel. Angular. Angular is loved. Crazy. Ruby is loved. I, they have many people that love Ruby. jQuery and Drupal. What the fuck? Let's go dread it. Here we go. People really fucking hate Drupal. <laughs> and then we have jQuery, Ruby on Rails, Angular, Laravel, Flask, Django. Huh? People are not liking Django that much. And then little bit, little bit React, little bit Vue, little bit Express. Wow, awesome. And Wanted. 
people have expressed interest in learning and working on React, View, Angular still. Django very little, and all the other ones are very little. I think React is the big one. People are very interested in React and View. Awesome, good to know. Next, uh, most loved whatever. The next one, the almost last one, is most popular development environments. Look at that. Visual Studio Code wins. Like Microsoft is doing amazing job here. Look at that, 50% just right there. And then we have Visual Studio, which is like the super sweet. Notepad, I don't know who is doing this, but wow. IntelliJ, Vim, Sublime Text is still there. Where is Atom? Oh, uh, so cute. It was good. Web developers, we use Visual Studio Code, definitely. Mobile developers, of course, they use Android Studio. And also Visual Studio Code, that's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Let's go to top paying technologies. If you learn Clojure, F Sharp, Go, Scala, Elixir, you'll make good money. If you learn JavaScript, you wouldn't make that much more good money. That's funny. I think the reason why is because on these positions, the offer is very low, but also the demand is very low. Like it's hard to get talent, but if you know Clojure, for example, I don't know if you're gonna find a job there so easy as if you would on JavaScript which this is the thing, or TypeScript. Look at that. If you learn TypeScript, you will make 4,000 more than a JavaScript person. That's, that's cool. And I think that's it. If you want to, let's look at the last one. Salaries, who makes the most salaries? Engineering manager, engineer, DevOps, engineer data, scientist, scientist, designer, educator. Where is full stack developer? 57K in the United States. Fuck me, look at our races, Jesus. Uh, where is full stack? 100,000 in the US, wow, good to know. All right, my people, that's it for this video. If you wanna look more into this survey, I will definitely advise you to do it. It's a very fun thing to read. Uh, it shows us the state of the whole development thing. For example, in this thing, you can see the people that make the most money and the people that have the most experience. And you can see DevOps is right here. DevOps is hard, man, hard as hell. Um, so yes. Everybody, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of this finding. Let me know when was your first time that you wrote code. And yeah, let me know if you agree with this or disagree with this. Let me know what language would you like to learn in the future based on this. And that's it. Um, my name is Nicolas. I enjoy kimchi. I enjoy making videos. Subscribe, like, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.